God's Word Speaks Healing is a unique audio compilation on which Pastor Benny Hinn reads promises of health and wholeness from throughout the scriptures as beautiful instrumental music from his favorite healing songs and hymns plays in the background. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. You can have God's Word Speaks Healing on CD for a gift of $15 or as a digital download for a gift of $8. Call, write, or order your copy of this faith-building volume online today. Who's with me today? My <laughs> sweetest friend, Melanie Hickey. She has blessed me beyond words in the last. You know, to do these programs with you, and now this is Friday today. Right. And to see Jesus in the Old Testament right. and yesterday in the Gospels. Right. Melanie, you've blessed me so much. I don't know how else, how, how, how to thank you. Really, I mean, Melanie Hickey is, in my opinion, one of the greatest Bible teachers. Bible teachers in the world today. There's no no doubt. She used to come and, and teach back in OCC. And you're still going for God. We've, we've been friends forever. And you took us through the Old Covenant right. on Monday. Genesis, Exodus, Le Leviticus, Numbers, De Deuteronomy, and showed us Jesus in, the, in, the, in these books. Right. Then on Tuesday, Ruth, Psalms, and, and that was about it, but loaded. Right, right. Then you took us to, through the prophets on right, Wednesday right. and what you showed about Hosea mm. blew me away. Sweet book. Oh, I mean Hosea so means savior and Hosea was God said go and, and, and marry this prostitute named Gomer which represents the, the church that really was bought back and then he had three children. Each name is a revelation. Right. It just blew me away. I'm thinking where did she get this from? And I know the Bible, okay? But I'm learning so much from you. And, and today we're going to go through the epistles. Well, Acts and the epistles right, and, the, and, right. and Revelation, which you memorized. Yes, I love it. You actually memorized I the memorized whole book, Revelation. like every chapter. Yes, every chapter. Melon, wow. <laughs> She's 81 and looks awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, honey, it's all yours. Okay, I want to talk about Acts with you. Please. A little bit, because Acts is a history book. It's the history part of the New Testament. And so when we look at Acts, we're looking at a miracle book for the body of Christ because Jesus is gone. I mean, he's ascended into heaven and he pours out the Holy Spirit on us. And Acts, this wonderful miracle book, has a miracle in every chapter. And who, who's involved in it? Christ in them. And so they began to speak the word. They began to heal the sick. They began to raise the dead. And so it tells you about Peter and what he did, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It tells you about Paul, the most unusual, dramatic experience. Exactly. And it shows how God doesn't waste anything. You know, here's Stephen being stoned, and he sees Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Why is Jesus standing? because he's receiving his first martyr. Mm. And here is Saul, who's later going to be called Paul, standing there, you know, he's helping them do it, to stone him. And he sees Stephen, and he never dreams that the death of Stephen, the martyrdom of Stephen, is going to take him to the place of right. May I ask you a question? Epistles. The name Paul is introduced in Acts 13. Right. When he was prayed over. Why was he... Why, why, why was his, his name changed or what? I'll tell you. Okay, I want to know. Okay. You know, we're doing this very ad lib. I mean, we, yeah, we there's nothing we planned. We didn't practice I this you. before. No, no, no. Okay, Saul is his Jewish name. Correct. Okay, but when he began to go to the Gentiles. Shmuel. Uh, well, no, sorry. Saul is Shaul. Okay, okay, go ahead. When he began to go to the Gentiles, God gave him a Gentile name. Paul is a Gentile. You said earlier something powerful that Jesus in us. 
You know, Jesus externally did not change lives. Jesus internally changes lives. You think about Peter and the others who saw his power, and when he, when he died, they said, well, we thought he was the Messiah. But Jesus in us, it's, it, right. it, that's the whole, that's, the that's whole what book. changes us. That's the, exactly, the, that's whole, the whole book. book. And we are to move in the miraculous. That's so important for every believer. And Benny, uh, this bothers me sometimes. People will say to me, well, you have the gift of healing. I said, well, you know, I, I don't know if I have the gift of healing. I believe in healing. I practice healing. And the Bible says healing is the bread of the children. Oh, so I want to share bread. But all believers are to lay hands on the sick and they recover. And you see in the book of Acts, all believers moving in the miraculous. And that's because Jesus said, the one with you shall be in you. That's once right. once right. He, he becomes the internal Christ, the same things happen, miracles and so forth, through our lives. Benny, I feel led to pray for people's hands. Oh, please. So put your hands out. I'm a, Benny and I are going to pray over your hands. Father, I thank you. These Amen. are miracle hands that are extended to you. You said believers would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Yes, Lord. Christ in us. The hope of glory heals the oh, sick. Lord, the name God. of Jesus heals the sick. It's not our name, but it's his name living alive in us. In Jesus' name, use us to heal the sick. Amen. Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Okay. Keep going. And at the end of the program, we're, we're going to pray for the sick. Good, good, good. Go ahead. Good. Okay, now. Shall I, want... I just erase this yes, or we want to keep it? Okay. Let's do it. Now, okay. I want to go to Romans. Uh, let me get yeah, that no, off. I'll Thank do it you. for you. Yeah. I'm now. so strong, you can tell. <laughs> okay. You are. She's Romans, 81 young, okay? Romans is wonderful. And I want to go to Romans 6 and 7. So you I want to give, read your Bible? Yeah, I okay. want my Bible for this. Here, here, I'll give it to you. Good. Because in Romans 6, it just sounds like a very sad situation. Oh, the things I want to do, I don't do. You know, uh, the things I shouldn't do, I get involved doing them. And it's just kind of a sad chapter. You know. And so you think, wow, you know, the wages of sin is death. Yep. And the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But then in 7... Oh, it's just unbelievable. So I'm going to kind of give you a little picture of animals here. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also become dead to the law through the body of Christ, That's that it. you might be married to another, to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. Now listen to me closely. Because, you see, we were married to the law. And I'm going to call that, we were married to Mr. Pig, or Mrs. Pig, Mr. Pig. <laughs> and so what do pigs have? They don't have lambs, they have piglets. And so in us was just that desire to sin. Oh, it was just so bad. Mm. But you can't jump out of one marriage into another. That's adultery. Yep. So the only way you can get married to someone else is for your mate to die. Yep. So Mr. Pig has to die. So how do we get married to Jesus and to grace? Well, we die with Christ. I am crucified. And the life which I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So how do I get free from the law of sin? Wow, I am crucified in Christ. When he died, I died with him. When he came into my heart, all my sins were taken care of. When God looks at me, you know, he doesn't see a pig. He sees a lamb because I'm in Jesus. I'm in the lamb. Now, who am I? I'm Mrs. Lamb, <laughs> you know. And so Mrs. Lamb, well, are you an adultery? Oh, no, the pig died. Mr. Pig died because I died. But now I'm alive in Christ. Now, what do lambs have? They have baby lambs. They don't have baby pigs. And that's why it talks to us about the fruit again. So when I look at, at the epistles, we see who we are in Christ. That's it. And that is so key for and us. You, and you're hitting on something very, very powerful. Please. In Jesus. Right. We cannot be in Jesus unless we're living in the Spirit. True. If we live in the Spirit, 
the flesh has no power right, over us. Right. But we, if we're living outside of the spirit, which is outside of Christ, we have no power at all to live True. a holy life. True. So it's, it's, again, the Holy Spirit is the key here. He is. Because he's the one who brings us into that life in Christ Jesus. He does. But how so powerful that you presented the law that we were married to. Yeah. But when Jesus died, it was over. And when we die with him, we are free from that old True. life. True. That's really what, 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 what you're saying. And see, when I see grace and law, you know, the law really leads us to Christ. Because we, Well, of course, we how do? would we know what, what sin is unless do? the law tells right. you it's sin? Yeah. And when you try to serve him by performance, like the rich young ruler, you know, I've kept all, all of the laws. You know, so he was very much a performance. Jesus said, okay, sell everything you have and come follow me. Oh, he couldn't do that. And Jesus wanted him, to, I believe, to be a disciple. And he missed it because he was so performance oriented. oriented. And but, yes. please, no, no, go, go ahead, finish. In the story. next chapter, Zacchaeus sees Jesus. He's up in a tree and he looks down and Jesus looks up at him and calls him by name and says, Zacchaeus come down. He said, oh, you know, I've cheated people. I'll restore everything four times. And Zacchaeus is changed, not by what he did, but when he saw Jesus. That's it. And so now we see grace. So grace is powerful. Jesus is grace and truth. And you know what? I mean, w w you can put it all in one thing. When you live in the presence of God, when the presence of Jesus is so real and covers you, sin has no power. That's true. It's that simple. Now, let's go on, Marilyn, please. Okay, I want to talk a little more about this. Please, go ahead. And then I want to go into to Revelation. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, I love Revelation. I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, now, I want to talk about how sometimes as Christians, you know, we'll make a mistake, we feel so condemned, you know, and of course, the Satan condemns us, the Holy Spirit convicts us. Yep. And because he tells us there's hope for us and help for us, but Satan says, there's no help for you. You'll always be this way. You'll never be this, you know, anything different. That's the voice of condemnation. Yep. So I want to tell about something with Wally and me. Anything you want. Come years on. ago, years ago, uh, Wally got very depressed and just wanted to leave the ministry. It was really, really bad. And I was so concerned. So his best friend, his wife, came to stay with us. So he sat down with the best friend, kind of poured out his heart. So then I said to the best friend later, I said, well, what is the problem with Wally? He said, you... I said, me? What do you mean? I'm a good wife. We love each other, blah, blah, blah. He said, yes, but you shouldn't minister. He said, you're on the radio. You teach Sunday school. You teach home Bible studies, because that's what I did at that time. He said, you don't need to do anything at all. Your whole ministry is Wally. Don't do anything in the church. Well, I felt very bitter at Wally. Okay, now watch. This is the pig <laughs> trying to live. And so I couldn't talk to him. I was so hurting. I thought, he lied to me all these years. He always encouraged me in the ministry. So finally, I got the guts to go to Wally. And I said, you know, am I a problem to you? What do you mean? And so I told him. He said, Marilyn, you know this man. He said, that's his problem. He said, do you know his wife took a tailoring course? She makes his suits. He said, please don't do that. I wouldn't wear anything you tailored. <laughs> and he said, he doesn't want his wife to do anything. So I took my bitterness from Wally and put it on the friend. Mm. Now, remember, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. I have the Holy Spirit to lead me to Amen. truth, grace and truth. So in the meantime, this friend gets a big, big church, invites me to come and speak. And, uh, you know, I, I'm all bitter. And then I met them at the plane, he and his wife. And the Lord said to me, look at his wife. She is not happy. He said, I let you see his weakness. So you would pray this couple through. But you were so busy being bitter and offended. Mm. He said, but it's you, your call when you see someone's fault to pray them through. Wow. And so his wife then came to me. She said, I'm not allowed to do anything. I can't do anything. And so I couldn't tell the husband that, but I could pray. Do you know she became so active in the ministry? She is an exciting minister today with wow. children. Precious. So I'm just saying the Holy Spirit in you. And we're not going to be perfect in all of our behavior, but Christ in us, the hope of glory, Amen. can take it 
and make it something wonderful. Amen. Can, can we go now on to Revelation? Oh, my goodness. We let's, have to erase this. Okay. Okay, so let's erase Let this. Let me do it for you. And then let's okay. go to Revelation because we have seven, eight minutes now. Okay. Let's go, Don. Okay, I'm ready. let's go Revelation. Now, it, I love Mel and Nikki. I'm in. <laughs> I love you, Benny. And I love everybody watching us. Yes, same here. Revelation. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm not doing it right. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> okay, Revelation is the revelation of Jesus. So keep that in mind. That's the way it opens. So this is Jesus talking to us. It's his revelation. And it definitely has to do with end time. And it talks about how glorious Jesus is in the very first chapter. It just shows the gloriousness of Jesus. Amen. So I take Revelation really as a house. So I want to make it real simple for you. Because the Lord dealt with me years ago and said, I want you to teach Revelation. I said, dear Lord, how can I teach Revelation? I don't have a revelation of Revelation. <laughs> And so I said, if you go to the bookstores, everybody's got a different revelation. And that's when he told me to memorize it. So this is going to be very, very simple. The first room, now we're talking about a house, we just see Jesus. And oh, we see the glorified Jesus, the resurrection Jesus. Then when, that's the chapter one. Then when we go to chapters two and three, we see the seven churches. And I think we really see the history of, of the Christian church. Wow, beautiful. And we see a candlestick. We're to be light in the world in a dark time. We see how an angel is provided for all seven churches. We also see how repentance works. Mm. And it really shows us in the Philadelphia church, it shows the rapture. So we say, wow, this is really interesting. But then in chapter 4 through 11, I am caught uh, up into heaven. John is caught up into heaven and he sees seven years of tribulation from heaven's viewpoint. And then after he sees that, we see heaven's viewpoint again. You say, I'm getting confused. Stay there, honey. You'll get it. And he sees chapters 12 through 16 from earth's viewpoint. Wow. So when you you're caught up into heaven. You see those seven years and all the stuff that's going on. But then you see how the earth will receive the seven years of terrible wrath coming upon the earth. So we see it from two views now. We see it from heaven. We see it from the people on the earth. And then in Revelation 17 and 18, you say, wow, you've got five rooms here. That's right. We see it from hell's viewpoint. Wow. Because the religious systems of the world will fall and the money will fall. And so we see, wow. We say, well, why would he tell us three times? Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established. That's awful. So he's establishing us. Now we come out of this, and so we're in the sixth room. And oh, this is very wonderful. Because now we're coming into chapters 19 and 20. His establishing himself on the earth us ruling and reigning with him. And then we come to chapter 22, which has to do with eternity. I like this chapter a lot mm. because it has seven comes in it. The spirit and the bride say come. And it's all at the end, all at the end. And you think, my goodness, it takes us to invite sinners, but it takes the spirit too. The spirit won't do it all. And there are seven comes in the last chapter. Now, Melon, just yes. quick, honey. Yes. You studied this over many years, of course. Yes, yes. People ask about the rapture. Yes. You believe in it. Oh, yes. And it, now, you know, they, they say, well, will we go through the wrath of God called the trib tribulation? Right, right. What, what do you say? Well, I believe there's more than one rapture. I believe the overcoming church will go before the tribulation. And I think they will be caught up in the air to meet him. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, be rapture ready. Don't be playing around. Be silly, honey. <laughs> then when the wrath starts being poured out, I think the Holy Spirit never leaves the earth and people are dealt with. And in the middle of the tribulation, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the last three and a half years, there will be a rapture. Of who? Again. Yeah. Really? And then the two witnesses are raptured. Remember, they're killed. Sure. And then the whole world sees them and they rise from the dead and preach Jesus. And I think 
No, let's go, let's, that, <laughs> okay. let's, let, let's go sit down. All right. Keep going. I think the two witnesses are Moses and Elijah because they're spoken of at the end of Malachi. And they're the two favorite prophets of the Jewish now, people. I've never heard anyone say there's two raptures during the you know, well, last there, days. There's a third one, yeah. And so... Now, I thought there's, there's already been six raptures in the scriptures, if you yeah. really look at it. Oh, yeah. It Enoch, begins with Enoch Elijah, and Swan. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, we have those examples. That's amazing. But then, I think, too, the great white throne judgment, it says, you know, blessed is man, doesn't have a part in that. There will be a raising of the wicked dead, and they will be judged out of the book of works. And so your works follow you. That's what Timothy says. So if you were a drunkard and you kill somebody, then your son becomes a drunkard and ends up in prison. Then your grandson, you know, kills somebody. Those works follow you. And so all these works are there. And then he says, you did this, this, this is still coming in. And he casts them into the lake of fire. But when he looks at us, all our sins, well, I can't see this side because they're covered in red. Melon, in Matthew 27, the saints rose from the dead after oh, yeah. the Lord rose from, right, from, from right. the dead. Did, did they rise physically? I believe they did. They well, saw I them do walking too, but I'm just streets. asking. They yeah. saw them walking in the streets. So, so now they, they've already been there. risen from the dead. Oh, yeah. So the, the last resurrection is really in twofold because a part of it already happened with them, right, but the second right, will happen right. with us. And there's really like one resurrection. That, you think just one? Well, I think there's... I, but there, there will be others, Oh, of I course. see what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah. that, because but it says rapture. the first resurrection, exactly. Rapture. And so One day I, w I want to do a program on prophecy with Mel and Hickey, because I know some of you are just, you know, <laughs> it, it triggered something, I'm sure. Because you are a deep woman of the, of the Word, well, and I love that. But I want the Word to be simple to people. And you made it very, very simple, these amazing days I've, we've had with you here, that we've done all in one day, but I love it that you took us through the Old Testament. Do you want to drink your tea while, while no, I talk? I'll let you. I want to put my hands together and end with one thing. Yes, ma'am. With Revelation. Go ahead. At the very end, it says, the grace of God be with you. So we hear all these things and think, oh, how am I going to live in this time? Blah, blah, blah. All these things are happening. The grace. And in 1 Peter, it talks about the manifold grace of God. So what is that? The manifold grace. Some of us need middle-sized grace. Some of us need tall grace. Some mm. of us need huge grace. Mm. Some of us need little grace. Mm. Some of us need tiny grace. So we say, oh, I have this need. I have all of this stuff in my life. But then in the last chapter, it says God has manifold grace. We have the need of manifold grace, but God has grace. So he has middle-sized grace. Wow. He has tall grace. He has huge grace. He has little grace. He has tiny grace. He has enough grace to take us through every situation. Before we pray, and we are <laughs> going to pray for the sick yes. right now, I want to make sure you will get this amazing Jesus Encounter study guide. I love it. Over 500 pages yes. of amazing information that will establish your life and strengthen you as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Think about that the saints in the New Testament did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they had to find Jesus in Genesis and Exodus and so on. Imagine having that same wealth in your life today, and you can find it all in this amazing Jesus Encounter study guide that Mel and Hickey put together over 40 years of Bible study. Get this today for a gift of $50 to the ministry, and when you call today, you will also receive free these five programs we've done together Dear Mellon, can we pray for the people now that oh, God yes. will heal them? Yes, 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 yes. Go yes. ahead and talk to them first, and then I, let's believe. I want you to know that healing belongs to you, because healing is the bread of the children. So w sometimes I think we think we're not worthy. We're in Jesus. When God looks at us, He sees us in Jesus. Hmm. Amen. So He sees you in Jesus. Jesus took your sins. He took your diseases, your infirmities. And I'm telling you, he can even give you new parts in your body. He's creative. He's creative. So put your hand on your body. We're going to pray for you. Thank you and Jesus. Father, I just pray for every person who has their hand on their body now. And I send the word into them 
their word prospers and accomplishes in which it's sent to, and it is healing them from the top of their head to the tip of their toes. God, I believe you're straightening some bones. I believe there's some crooked backs that are straightening up. Mm -hmm. I believe tumors are leaving people's bodies right mm -hmm. now in Jesus' name. I believe mental confusion and forgetfulness is leaving people's minds, that they have the mind of Christ. I thank you, Father, that people that are in despair and despondency and terrible depression, you are filling them with joy. Amen. I thank you for creating new hearts, new circumstances, new situations that when they this program is over, they think, I am a new woman. I am a new man. Jesus makes me whole. Amen. Lord, we agree everyone oh, yes. will be made whole today mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. You said if any two will agree, it will be done. And precious Lord, we lay our hands on these mm -hmm. prayer requests mm -hmm. and pray every need to be met today. We pray for homes and families to be healed and made whole, for loved ones to be saved, financial needs to be met. You are the God of miracles. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And Lord, bring them to you closer than mm -hmm. ever that they might love you intensely. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. My passion is to get everyone watching this program in the whole Bible. The whole Bible. Marilyn Hickey is a world-renowned Bible teacher. Her Encounter the Word study guide is the result of more than 40 years of research, examination, and prayer. This valuable resource will help you recognize Jesus from Genesis through Revelation and significantly deepen your relationship with Him. It's no longer about Abraham, Isaac. It's the Father and the Son. It's no longer Isaac carrying wood. It's Jesus carrying the cross. Right. It's no longer about Joseph. It's all about Jesus. Included in this 536-page volume is a wealth of information on each of the 66 books in the Scriptures, including outlines of important issues, fast facts to start each study, detailed teaching on seeing Jesus in each book, parallels between the Old and New Testaments, plus many charts and maps to aid your study. See, this is a resource. I mean, you don't read through this like you're reading a book. No, of course not. But this is a resource with your Bible. The Encounter the Word Study Guide by Marilyn Hickey can be yours today for the special low price of only $50. This small investment in your biblical knowledge and spiritual growth will provide you with benefits for years to come. And if you'll call today to order, Pastor Benny will send you a free bonus gift, the DVD of the five programs he recorded with Marilyn. Their teachings and discussions are the perfect starting point from which to immerse yourself in the study guide. These are the seven revelations of Jesus That's in the right. tabernacle. He's and the, the lamb, he's the water, he's the bread. And the whole Bible is Jesus. Absolutely. Remember, you'll get this 536-page Encounter the Word study guide, plus the bonus DVD for only $50. This special offer will only be available for a limited time, so call now. It's time for Jesus. Amen. <laughs>